Welcome back everyone, time to talk about another phone that came out many years ago, well not a crazy amount of time, but surprisingly when I talked about the Samsung Galaxy S9 in the middle of 2020, that actually ended up being one of my most viewed mid-2020 reviews that I did at that time, which is pretty interesting because to a lot of people they may seem like, oh why would you even talk about the Galaxy S9, it's such a random phone, we have the Galaxy S20 right now. but. As a most of you guys know, a lot of people bought this phone, it's still being sold in the used market, it's still being sold on Amazon, and there are a lot of people who don't want to spend a ton of money on these devices. Now I don't have to like preface this whole video with saying that every time, but I always find it very interesting how a phone even like a Galaxy S9 could still get this much coverage and still be kind of relevant to a lot of people. Now there's some pros for the Galaxy S9 and there's some cons as well for sure, I'm not saying it's a perfect phone because it's obviously not, but when this phone came out in 20. 2018, visually it looked kind of the same thing as the Galaxy S8, but when you look at this specific design and look at a lot of phones that are still coming out, it's actually very interesting what Samsung was able to do with a phone like this, even though it did recycle pretty much the same design as, as the Galaxy S8, they did a really good job on this device as well. Now you can pick up these things on Amazon for like less than 200 something dollars, so I'll go ahead and find the cheapest one on Amazon, I'll link it down in the description below, you can get it from there and help support the channel at the same time. And one thing that I always liked about the Samsung Galaxy S9 was just how well it felt in the hand. I don't know if well is the right word, but also the screen size and the fact that it had very slim bezels on the side and it pretty much had slim bezels on the top and bottom. Now again this thing came out in 2018, over two years ago, so these bezels are kind of big-ish now, but it's still not that big of a deal. It's that 5.8 inch Super AMOLED display, it's a 1440p panel and I've always liked this panel, I felt like Samsung has done a really good job in their panels and going to the Galaxy S10, they did a phenomenal job on those panels on all those devices. And I think a lot of people would probably say the same thing, but the Galaxy S9 had a pretty good panel too. And that is one of its biggest assets is the way it looks on the front. Even though it has a little bit of bezel on the top and bottom, it still looks good. It still performs well in terms of the panel. And I actually do like it a lot. I don't think it's like a con of this phone at all. Now you do have USB Type-C on the bottom of this device, but on top of that, you also have a headphone jack still, which is actually kind of funny. I mean, it's pretty insane that we still even talk about that type of thing, but it does have that headphone jack, which is really cool so you can use it you can not use it if you want to but it's there if you want to now on the back you have a glass back which is really cool and you also have a single camera setup now the single camera setup I felt like was pretty good on this device we had a single 12 megapixel camera and like I stated before and I'll probably say it again Samsung has some of the best cameras of that year and I think this was no exception I think I think this was the same year the pixel 3 came out and that had a pretty good sensor but this was kind of the time right before all those camera sensors were like the the telephoto, the ultrawise, before that became super mainstream. We already had phones like the Galaxy S10, we already had phones like the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 Plus and the 7 Plus and those phones had multiple sensors. So it was very interesting that Samsung didn't necessarily put an extra lens here, but they did put it on the Galaxy S9 Plus. So I still think this camera is pretty good. You can do 4K at 60 on it. It's just a wide angle lens though. And I feel like that's probably this camera's not biggest disadvantage, but it probably is something that will probably rub people up the wrong way a little bit. I wish it did have, you know, the telephoto lens or ultra wide sensor. I feel like that would have been really cool. But regardless, this photo and video quality is actually really good. And I remember not too long ago, I think last year, I saw this video of some concert thing or whatever and it, I think it was like a Drake concert or ASAP Rocky concert and somebody was actually filming it on their device and it was actually really high quality and people were even commenting about it they were like bro what did you film this on it looks really good and somebody said they filmed it on like a, either a Galaxy S9 or Galaxy S9 Plus the, the pretty much the same phone and that was actually really surprising that even the last year people were saying that and I have to admit it was actually pretty good quality and the fact that and the fact that this phone was the one that filmed it just shows, you know, and it was like a low light concert and that's just an example. I've done 50,000 videos on this thing and I can definitely tell you the camera of this thing is good if you don't need the ultra wide or telephoto lenses. This thing, I don't think it has portrait mode, but it still has a lot of features built into that camera. So I think at the end of the day, it's still a solid sensor. On the front, you have an eight megapixel wide angle lens, pretty good camera. You can do 1440p videos on it. Then you have like a two megapixel iris scanner, which is just like to scan your eyeball. I don't know why they ever did that. It was so corny, but I I guess that's the future, but in terms of the camera setup, that's pretty much how I would sum it up. I think it's a good camera setup even now in 2020. It's missing those specific features, you know, like the telephoto or ultra wide sensor, but I think the quality is still actually pretty decent. 
Now zooming out of the camera, no pun intended, I'm probably gonna start saying that, that's actually really funny. <laughs> you also have a micro SD card slot on this device as well, which is something that I personally do like when you have a device like this. In order to future proof it the, you know, as much as you can, you wanna be able to expand the storage however you want to. They closed the battery, but they did expand the storage or give us expandable storage still, which is really awesome. This thing also has IP68 dust and water resistance. We haven't gotten anything bigger than that. I think with iPhones, they've actually gotten a lot better now, but this one is still really good if you throw some water on it, I'm pretty sure it'll be okay. So in terms of the outside, the camera and everything, that pretty much covers it up there. Now software wise, this is this phone's probably the biggest problem with it and it's kind of unfortunate because it's you know stopping at Android 10. It's not getting Android 11 which uh, you know it's it is what it is. There's nothing we can really do about it and unfortunately Samsung did make the cutoff for their extra year of software updates on the Galaxy S9. So if you have an S9 or older obviously those phones are not supported anymore but if you have a Galaxy S10 or newer those phones will now be getting the extra three years of software updates. So just three years in total not an extra three years. So the S10 will be getting you know an extra year software updates and so on and so forth and I found that really good like I was really proud of Samsung for doing that but I felt like with the Galaxy S9 it could have easily handled Android 11. I feel like the Galaxy S8 could probably handle Android 11 to be honest but this phone is that cutoff period so it's not supported anymore. You, can, I think you can custom ROM like the Exynos versions but the Snapdragon ones that everyone has you can't really custom ROM them which is really really sad so I think for a majority of people out there if you're getting this phone Android 10 will probably still be good enough for you. I even made Android 10 review not too long ago on this phone and I think like I said for a majority of people you may be okay with it. I feel like it could have handled Android 11. I have it on some of my devices. I have it on my Pixel 5. It's not a crazy jump from Android 10 so that's probably this phone's biggest downside. Now you're getting security updates still so if anything crazy happens this phone will be supported but the software side of things is probably my least favorite aspect of this phone right now so keep that in mind. Again if you have this phone and you made it last this long then you know by all means keep it but that's one of those things that I kind of felt away about in my opinion. Now performance wise this is also something that I kind of still like about this phone. It has that Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 chipset, an octa-core CPU, an Adreno 630 GPU, and 4 gigabytes of RAM on all the models, which there's three different models of, which I'm surprised about. And I still feel like the performance of this phone is pretty decent. Now, I feel like this phone got way better with Android 10. I don't know if I'm the only one who thinks that, but when I got the Android 10 update and I eventually went through and used the phone and all that stuff, it was a solid update for this specific device. And I think the biggest thing that this phone came with were the gestures. And I said this in my mid-2020 review as well. This phone, just having that extra gesture capability really added that much more flavor to this device and it added so much more fluidity. I hated clicking those buttons all the time. It just felt so archaic. With the gestures now, that actually made this phone feel that much more smoother, even though it kind of wasn't. It may have been like placebo or whatever, but that was a huge advancement in my opinion and that was something that I really do like. It's funny because that's something so small, but in my opinion was something so big and the performance sector really nice really changed my opinion on the performance vector. Now, if you're playing games or all that stuff that we always talk about, you're gonna be pretty much okay for the most part. There's really nothing that's gonna be horrible unless you're trying to multitask a lot within one game to the other. And that's probably the biggest improvements that we've seen in the last you know, several generations of Android phones. We went from four gigs to six gigs to eight gigs and like 10 to 12 gigs for like a baseline model. And now I think the OnePlus 8s or 8T stop out of 12 gigs too, which is really cool. So for a majority of things you're gonna do day to day, if you're not a heavy power user and you're not trying to you know, multitask a bunch of apps and all that stuff in the background, you will probably be okay for the most part. It's gonna be slower here and there. You know, the S20s came out, I compared this phone to that phone as well. And that was probably the biggest downside was the RAM management portion. But when you're opening apps and stuff, I think you're gonna be okay. Loading apps is gonna be slower, but it's not gonna, it's like expected. So I think performance wise, even now in 2020, in the later part of 2020, you're probably going to be okay with it. Now, I probably, you know, I'm not going to say it's as fast as something like S20, even a Note 20, or even like S10, I feel like that phone was faster. But you're going to probably be okay as long as you're not expecting crazy amounts then you'll probably be okay for the most part. So in terms of performance, that pretty much covers it up. Now ending it off with the battery life, this thing has a 3000 mAh battery, which this day and age is something that is kind of like, you know, I'll tell you like this, with the phones like the Galaxy S10, I think that one had like a 35 or 3400 mAh battery. The S20 has around a 4000 mAh battery, maybe even more. The S20 FE has a 4500 mAh battery. We've only gotten bigger and better since then, which is really nice, but still, you know, 3000 is good enough. I kind of felt like with because that screen is such high resolution it's a pretty decent sized screen the performance on this phone and all that stuff the battery life was one 
one of those aspects of this phone that wasn't really the best for me. I felt like Android 10 may have taken a toll on the battery, but I think it still would have been pretty, you know, middle of the road kind of, you know, it's not something I would brag about. This thing has wireless charging and because it is a couple years old, you know, batteries degrade over time. It's very normal. So if you got one that was like a full 100% million hours, then go for it. But I probably would say this is probably like very, very average. Probably the most average aspect of this phone would probably be the battery life. They did a really good job though on the Galaxy S10, so I'll give them credit. But the S9, I think it was probably one of its most average features. Not a horrible battery, but definitely not a good battery. Definitely right in the middle. So in terms of everything, that really pretty much covers it up. And, you know, to answer the question, should you buy a Samsung Galaxy? Galaxy S9 in 2020. Well, let me tell you the pros and cons and then what I think. So the pros, I mean, this phone still feels like a very premium device. When you hold this phone, it feels better than a Google Pixel 5 or even a Galaxy S20 FE. I feel like this phone is a very premium device. You have glass on the back, you know, somewhat small bezels on the front. You have a great camera on this device. You have IP certification. You have expandable storage, which is really cool. You have a pretty decent camera, like I stated. I think I said that twice. And, you know, performance-wise, it handles pretty much everything you throw at it and there's really not that much to you know hate about this device but there's also not that much to like you know love and like gush over this device for and some of the cons are it's done with software updates you know it may get like a couple security updates but nobody really cares about that and that's one of this phone's biggest you know downsides it's not getting supported you can't even custom rom it or anything so you can throw a launcher on it but other than that you're pretty much done there the battery life is pretty average you know it's not something i would you know be hyped up over and i think those two things alone are the, probably the biggest disadvantages maybe the way it looks if you're somebody who doesn't like the bezel on the top and bottom but that's probably one person who's watching this video but like I said I mean for a majority of things about this phone I think the battery and the software updates alone would be enough to make me not want to personally pick this up but if you're okay with that then this phone I think is a pretty decent pickup now like I said the pixel 3 also came out the same year and I would probably recommend that phone over this phone to be honest just because it's still supported and has a development community behind it and I would personally pick up that phone over this phone but choice is yours it's totally up to you but like i said i'll leave a galaxy s9 and i'll even leave a google pixel 3 in the description pick it up from there and kind of go from there so that really pretty much covers it up if you guys enjoyed the video definitely hit that like button leave a comment do whatever you want to do hit that subscribe button that'll mean so much check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my other channels more importantly everything awesome every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out till then